is Marshall Mosley. My screenplay wild card was selected out of thousands, which is still hard for me to believe. I'm a 20-year veteran of the computer industry. I'm a senior manager at a software company. I wanted to write and tell stories since I can remember. It's just, you know, the chance of a lifetime. My name is Rick Carr, and I'm from Columbus, Ohio, where I work uh, as a customer service rep for a printing company out there. If Hans Gubenstein were, were chosen as the uh, number one script, I can't even really imagine how it would change my life. It's pretty good here. 33 year old guy getting to spend a week with his mom. <laughs> I'm Marcus Dunstan, and this is Patrick Melton, and we came out here from uh, the University of Iowa, where we met, and we live out in Los Angeles currently. We're only about a mile from where we live. This is really our Project Greenlight Script Feast has made it into the top three, so we're here to uh, take our chances. Gosh, I'm just nervous. Ay, 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 ay. We came to the lovely Roosevelt Hotel in Hollywood, California to pick the winning script. Uh, thanks. What we had were three very distinct films, Feast, Wild Card, and does anybody remember that Hans Grubenstein invented time travel? <laughs> in the writer panel meetings, writers come in one at a time, sort of tell us why they wanted us to make their movie. But walking into a room and having this kind of panel, it's got to feel incredibly nerve-wracking. I always feel for those guys in those situations. It's kind of our chance to hear what you have to say about the script. If it's chosen, it'll change my life. It's my shot, it's my chance, and I'm going to grab it with both hands. Is there an inspiration for it? The idea just come from somewhere in your subconscious? I'm a big fan of mystery novels. Wild Card is more of an adult thriller, you know, con man against con man kind of movie with a twist. I was really impressed by your writing. Uh, I'll come out right out and say that. Well, thank you, thank you. It is probably the most different in the adultness of it and the sophistication. I think Wild Card is a very subtle, interesting script that first-time directors just not going to do a good job with, but I like the script a lot. Some of us at least felt that your script was better than the parameters that the Project Greenlight movie gets made under. No, it's not, really. <laughs> it's not, honest. No, it's much worse. <laughs> yeah. My original concept of this was a movie about bad people doing bad things and they have emotions and they love each other, but there's almost nobody who's nice. You're a talented guy. You understand how to tell a story in, in, a, in a smart way. Wild Card was one of my original favorites. A really good director could really kill that movie. You did a great job. Thank you. It, uh, we all really were impressed by it. Thank you. I couldn't have hoped to get it in front of people like you, and I really appreciate what you've done. Thank you very much for coming down. <clears throat> <sighs> Thanks. I wasn't certain at all what kind of questions to anticipate. And, you know, they might ask this, they might ask that, I'm not sure. Well, I definitely think your script is by far, of all the ones that we got, the most creative and unique. Thank you. How did you come up with it? Well, I kind of had this idea about people rewriting their own existence. Hans Gubenstein is a comedy about what would you do if you actually could travel in time. It's funny. It's really funny. I laughed out loud reading it. The whole idea was that, I, and I think I got this from, from Hawking's Brief History of Time, the idea is that they, they've got this machine that generates this pulse, just travels so fast out into the cosmos. That Rick came across much more like he was written an episode of Time Travel for Star Trek than he had written a comedy. Theoretically, it generates a pulse, and you've got this receiver that knows how to read this backwards traveling energy. I got it. I got it. <laughs> I'm not as smart as you are, clearly. Oh, so I just, uh, you don't strike me as a guy who was like a stand up comedian at one point in your life. No. What's, you keep the funny inside, don't you? <laughs> My favorite is Hans Gubenstein. That's the movie that I think could break out. I thought, you know, in general, he's very smart, you know, interesting. I just was amazed he wasn't that funny. Probably. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. I was definitely nervous. I mean, that's, that's a heavy room to walk into. Hi, ben, Marcus. So intimidated by those people, especially like Wes Craven. The, the nerves, I mean, I was dying. Feast is your very straight down the middle monster movie. Unknown evil that gets loosed on a bar in the middle of nowhere. What would you compare your script to, like in tone? Evil Dead 2 yeah. was a remarkable influence because 
you know what they have there, like six bucks and a high school gym. It was ingenuity, and I don't see that in anything these days. I think in the first 20 pages they introduced 20 characters, speaking characters, and at least eight beasts. And I think it's a poor choice given the budgets that we had. I, I frankly didn't think it was that good of a script either. If you guys were directing the film, what would you say to whoever's going to come up with these creatures? What, what would you ask them to build? What if Carrie Strug was hit by lightning? <laughs> <laughs> she stuck the last landing. It's when she stuck it, she was like, ah, and then she, she bit off Bella Caroli's head in a, in a shocking moment, you know? They're guys that grew up watching these kinds of movies, and, and it really shows in their writing. And this was like a way to make something that's new, something that gets your attention and drives like a muscle car. And this was it. I mean, this is the type of thing where if you happen to catch the first minute at midnight, you're going to stay up until 5 in the morning if that's when it ends to watch it because it's just a propulsive onslaught of velocity and ferocity, you know? So what's the poster? I sketched one out, actually. Those guys spoke the Dimensions language. Like, this is the poster. We have the tagline. We have a trailer idea. The last thing you see, the last thing you'll feel are teeth. And then, <laughs> feast. <laughs> this sucker rocks. <laughs> I love it. Dimension loved it. They were like, these are our kind of guys. Once the writers were done, we sat down to talk about it. Well, I still think uh, Wildcard is far, far away from all of them. <laughs> I can see your eyes twitching. <laughs> it is a tiny bullseye. Like, if you're going after commerciality and sort of getting it, hitting it is small. And I just think twice now we've picked things that I would put in the tiny bullseye category. Is there a mandate for, for this process? I mean, it's not purely about may the best script win. It's definitely not that. Let me just say that May the most commercial script win? Would that be the paradigm? It's the what, what script can muster the enthusiasm of everyone who's involved in the process and also at the studio, what, what, what film we feel we can make and market successfully. I think that Hans Rubenstein is really creative and inventive and original and smart. It's funny. He can write comedy. I laughed my ass off. Once we started deliberating, I really was going to start trying to push for Hans. And then something went horribly awry. There is enthusiasm at Dimension to make and market Feast, to put the company behind it. I don't see people going to see Feast. They're saying, our script is funny, it's campy, and it's like, yeah. Evil Dead 2 is funny and campy. Your script's not that funny and campy. Feast is where we come out, you know what I mean? It, it's the movie that, that I think everybody can get behind at the studio. The studio said, Feast is the movie we're prepared to make and market. Making cynically made, low-budget horror films for the purpose of making a small uh, profit are not the reason that I got into Greenlight. I don't think it's why Ben did or Chris did either. But it's like, do you believe in Feast because you can make it for a price and you can flip it for a bigger price? Or do you believe in Feast, be, Feast because you really think it's the best movie? I think it's a crowd-pleasing movie. I, I think if you see a movie like Cabin Fever or any of these sort of lower-budget horror movies that come out in the last two years, I think this movie fits that bill. And with a studio like Dimension, you sort of have to readjust the kind of movie that you make. That's not why we got involved with Project Greenlight, to make, to make what, what, you know, a, B, a B horror movie. Just to kind of stumble in back into the Greenlight family and kind of see that this is where it had landed. Uh, was was shocking for me, you know, and, and infuriating, really. There's a whole world there of low-budget uh, horror. That, that, that I understand, and there's a lot of money there, too. I just don't f want it, man. I, I, I don't I see what want you're to spend saying. my you time know, on that.